Okay, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek and in today's video we're now moving on from the analysis design modules or should I say the analysis modules of Procon for analysis and design suite and we're now going to the concrete modules. That is the concrete design analysis and detailing modules that we have when it comes to Procon. So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so now some of you may be wondering why are we moving from the analysis and skipping steel and going straight into concrete and even when it comes to analysis, why haven't we done sumo, frame and plain stress analysis? Now if you remember in the very first videos where we discussed how this tutorial, how this series will be going, I told you sumo, frame and plain stress are for complete structures, they are for more complicated structures and it does not make sense to have a beginner jumping straight into the main meal without you having had the appetizer before the main meal. So what we're doing is we touched upon the simple single element design analysis modules rather that is the single span analysis beam analysis module and the beam on elastic support analysis module. But even then we also looked at the CONSEC concrete section design module and we also looked at the general PROSEC section properties calculation module which is this helped us to better understand the beam and alice modules but now what we want to do is we are definitely as well going to skip steel because steel is much more difficult as you know even in the industry you have more reinforced concrete design engineers as opposed to steel design engineers because steel is much more complicated and also the reason why we're going to skip this is because most of these work as post-processing programs after you understand frame so for some of them we may need to understand using frame before we go to the steel design members but obviously when it comes to moment connections and seal connections we can do this separately but also this require a lot of input as opposed to the reinforced concrete design modules so what we will do is since you're a beginner and even in any college whether you're in america south africa uk australia or even canada the first step that you start designing or anything that you start designing is concrete before you move to timber and you move to steel. So that is what we're going to do in this series as well. Having said that, so the first thing that we need to look at or what we're going to do is this is just an overview. I need to tell you that we're going to be looking at the concrete design suite that is in Procon. So what you have to understand is that Procon has several concrete design modules that are included in the suite. And these are useful tools when it comes to the detailing and design of typical reinforced and even pre-stressed concrete uh, members as well. Now, you will find that when you go to the concrete tab, which is uh, which is on top of your screen, if you go to the concrete tab, obviously when you open Procon, it starts off at home and then you navigate to concrete. Now, when you go to concrete, as I mentioned in one other video, you have three components or three main sections. You have the beams and slab modules, and then you have the components modules, which are divided into two where you have the column design, which is made up of the rectangular column, circular column, and then you have the sub substructure design, which is where you have your retaining wall design and your base design for isolated footings. And then you have the sections design. This is where you can do a section design for concrete uh, sections, crack width, and also for check and punch and sheet. So now let's just cover a bit of them or we'll talk about this in more detail. Now, when it comes to beam and slab design, what you have is the first thing you have is the continuous beam and slab design module and then next to it you have the pre-stressed beam and slab design modules. These are used to design and detail reinforced and pre-stressed beams and slabs. Yes, this works for both beams and slab and if you want to have a simplified design of say flat panel slabs or even just slabs in general, you have to your right or the third module which is the rectangular let me zoom to it, the rectangular slab panel design module. Now, in contrast, what you have to understand is that uh, if you have a slab which is a more complicated geometries, for example, slabs with openings and um, or maybe different geometries which are just difficult to comprehend, you might want to use the finite element slab design module, which is going to be under frame and also under sumo, which is what we will look at at the very end. So. As you can see, we want to kickstart you off with the simple things. So right here, when we're using these three modules, we're going to be designing or looking at how to design simple rectangular or square slabs that do not have openings. Okay. Now, next, 
once you have once we cover everything that we have done here also we need to remember what if we are going to design a flat slab we will be checking for the um patch and shear using the patch c23 module which is the patch and shear design module which you see where my cursor is right now now since we've covered beams and slabs the next thing that you obviously want to do is you come there's the component section and as i told you earlier before the component section has two parts mostly the first three which are column design and then the last two which are substructure design there's the superstructure and substructure when it comes to your building now obviously the first thing is going to be the rectangular column design and then six you have the circular column design these offer rapid design and detailing of simple short and slender columns so if you want to rapidly or quickly design a rectangular column that does not have any openings or anything that is complicating its setup as well as if you want to design a circular column these are the modules that you want to use and in this case i think i have one uh one of them open or i do not in this case i have the general column open which we now need to discuss now since these ones are for rapid uh design and detailing what you also have the third one is the general column design this one is used when you're designing columns with complicated shapes which can be designed uh, for example we are talking about semicircular columns as you can see there you have maybe t section uh, columns l section columns u shaped columns and this is also good when you're designing columns that have rainwater pipes just to click on an example this is the section that your column will be having and some of you may not understand the input that you can see right now on the screen. We are going to talk more about how to input this or create this section in Procon because as you can know, it's very difficult. You don't even know how to enter this section. You need to understand how to enter the data in the software before you can actually use the software. Otherwise, it's just useless. Okay, so that is about the general column shape, which is used to design any complicated columns. Now, for the substructure part, as I said, we have two modules one you have the retaining wall module and you also have the base design so what happens is this one is the retaining wall design module and as you can see you can use this to design cantilever walls probed cantilever walls even gravity walls and also if you have any reservoirs that you need to design for water tanks or anything else that keeping any fluid you can use this module to design the tanks or the walls of the tanks so as to see what type what size and what reinforcement you need to provide to retain your liquid so this is it and we're going to talk more about this when we look at an example as usual and the only problem is our fcu when in the demo mode will be limited to 19 okay now also last next but not least we have uh, in the component section we have the base design so the base design some of you may have seen this in previous tutorials where i cover it this one is used when you want to design um, rectangular or even square substructure bases, column bases. This, what we're talking about is isolated footings or rather what you, some of you call pad footing. So as you can see in this one, you can design a pad footing with one column or even two columns and you can design for ultimate limit state or even for serviceability limit state. And the good thing is, as you can see on the screen, you can design for column bases that are going to be subjected to either extra load only you can even go on to uh, bilateral loads, that is the loads in the X, HX, or HY, or you can also design columns subjected to moments. So we're going to talk more about this. So I'm just going to close it and as we move on. Now, the other thing we need to know is about the section design. So two modules are available uh, for you. First, you have the concrete section design and the section design for concrete. So these are available if you want to do a quick design of the sections or just to check someone else's sections. This is mostly useful for people who work in areas of authority, municipalities, approval offices, as you might want to check somebody's design quickly and see if what they did is they actually designed or they just threw something to you uh, for you just to check. So this is what you can use to just to double check. We went over the concrete section design module in the previous videos, but I think we can also delve into it more so that you get to understand it. Now, last but not least, you have the punch and shear design. So I already had one of the windows open. This is the punch and shear design. This is useful when you're trying to design or to check the punch and shear that will be occurring in a slab to see if what you would have designed, say maybe using the continuous beam example. In this case, you will find that even if you go to reinforcement, as it says, you can for you can have flat slabs, flat slabs, and even ribbed slabs. So 
you see let's say you design something in this module and now you want to check for the patching sheet if it will be okay or what reinforcement you need for the patching sheet this is the module that you will need and as you can see there's a standard example edge column corner column internal column or even a column that has a column head as you will know in the theory for flash labs uh you will design differently whether it's a flat plate column with a column head or it's a column with a column head and a ribbed as well so this is the module that we will design we will look more into it and i believe i already have a section where we did a flat slab and if you want you can check out that tutorial link is in the description box and i may also try and put a link up above so just click on that and you will go straight to the video and you will learn more about flat slabs and column strips and middle strips so that is it i think this is it i've covered i've told you more and more about this so continuous beam is for your normal beams and slabs and then the captain one is for the post tangent or pre-stressed um, beams and slabs and then this one is for simple if you want to do a quick and simple design for a flat slab or even flat blade or even a normal slab then all you have next are the components where you have rectangular columns circular columns general columns then you go to the substructure which is the wall and the base and then you go to the crack width cone sag and punching sheet design modules so this is it now what we're doing is we need to delve into each and one of these modules and see the capabilities that each one has and so that you understand what exactly will the software be asking you when it presents its user interface to you as if you're a beginner an absolute beginner you really might not even understand where all of this is coming from and for example in this one you would not even understand what do they mean by percentage redistribution downward optimized redistribution and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the theory behind the calculation and the design from the software and so that you'll be able to use it to design your very own things so that's it from me thank you very much for tuning in if this is your first time please subscribe leave a comment leave a like and also check out my other links in the description box go to whatever playlist you want and if you have anything that you want to add please just leave a comment check out the timestamps as well so this has been it for tutorial 8 what we're going now is we need to dive into one of those modules and begin with tutorial 9